Hello, my crafty friends. Thanks so much for joining me today. So we're going to do the center for the Remembrance Poppy. And this is my prototype, the first one I made. It's not my, be not my best work, but it was just a try, first try. And so we're going to be making the center part with the stamen here. And we're going to use a... Um, a, a clay to make this. And I'm also going to show you a couple of other options in case you don't have clay. So the clay that I use is this Crayola air dry clay. And inside this pot, I have some options for different clay. Um, you can, I like the, I don't use this very often. I know that Quinn and Jesse love this, this one. This is the Crayola model magic. For me, I don't like the way it dries. It just doesn't dry hard enough for my whims. And um, so what else are we going to need? We're going to need some paint. I don't really know what kind of colors we're going to use yet, but I'd like to go for, instead of this black, black center, I'd like to go for something that has a, that's lighter and um, has a, a little bit of green in it. So I've just got some brown, some white, some black, and some green here, all in acrylic paints. I also have a little bit of acrylic um, medium and iridescent. So I think that's going to be kind of cool too. And But that's optional. You, the world is your oyster. You can make it any way you want. So let's move this out of the way. So for all that paint, we're going to need a little bit of water. I've got way more than I need. And we're going to need a paintbrush. And we're going to need our palette to mix our paint in. And we're going to, of course, need a wire for our center. This is a 20 gauge um, paper covered wire. I have a a little bit of um, the turbo tacky glue here in, this, of the, in the glue pens. I really like these. For paper, we are going to need some black. Um, this is a heavy. You can use really anything you, you'd like in black. Um, will be your, you can do it any way you want. So I'm going to clear the decks here and we'll get started. Okay, so welcome back. So I think there was one thing I forgot to tell you about in the, um, in the opening piece was... I'm, I'm going to use a little bit of this glitter. This is a, just an, a really fine black glitter. This one happens to be from Martha Stewart. It's called Onyx. But you can you can do that. You can pass on it. I'm going to show you some other options for that as well. So we're going to get started on making our center. And I've made one here that I haven't painted yet. And so I'm going to show you how I did that. So I'm just going to dig into my, uh, my tub here. And I'm actually going to grab a couple more of these wires because I always like to do more than one. I tried to do this with a heavier wire and it just didn't work. Okay, so there we go. Actually, I think these might be 22. That'll work fine. So any light, um, light gauge wire you have. So I'm going to grab just a little piece. You see, I've done a lot of this already. Just a little piece of this. This is this is probably enough to do. Well, maybe yeah, one, and maybe even get started on the second one. Throw our extra in there. So we're just going to take this piece of clay, work it in our hands, and roll it into a ball. So we got this little ball here, and then I'm going to take and I'm going to create the cylinder out of it. So I'm just going to roll it back and forth in my hands like this, and part of my hands are they're looking bad. Um, actually, this is probably enough for two. And if you hear some noises in the background, it's because Tucker's in here, trying to keep him out of trouble. Um, so I'm going to actually take this part off because I don't need that. And I'm going to roll this just a little tighter, especially this is going to be the bottom. This is going to be the top, the heavy, the thickest part will be the top. Okay. And then we're going to start to flatten out this piece here. We're going to create like a, almost like a mushroom cap on it. Just keep working it a little bit. And I do want this to be thinner. So let's do that. Tucker, he's getting into my paper. That's what puppies do. If you haven't seen Tucker, he's a, a currently a three-month-old mini Bernadoodle. He's a second generation, so his mother is a Bernadoodle, and his dad is a poodle. So um, 
he's going to be my hypoallergenic dog because you all know I've talked about it before <clears throat> my voice is raspy because I have terrible allergies so we're going to take our little wire and we're just going to drive it into somehow drive it into the middle of this clay and I want to get it as close to the top as I can just so it's going to give us some form you can hold this all really well and then I'm just going to continue to work it like I said, I want this to be like a mushroom cap here. So I'm just gonna keep working it. And I think that's just about right. And then I'm gonna just work this clay down here on the bottom to go thinner and thinner and thinner all the way down. Oops, I went too far, story of my life. Um, I always go too far. Take that off and we're just gonna Fix that by, oh, you know, one thing I didn't do, I'm going to just pause right here. I'm going to pull this out. I'm going to put it right back in the same hole. We are going to add some glue to our wire because sometimes when this glue dries, it can shrink and, um, and fall off the stem. So we don't want that to happen. I sure wish my voice would clear up, but... It is what it is. Someday. Of course, the fires here in Northern California don't help any. Now, I need to get that just a touch wet. It's damped in my finger a little bit. Just to shape this. Make it look mushroomy. There we go. So we've got that. Then what we're going to do to get those little, I don't know if you could see this on camera, but this in real life, you can see it really well. This um, has the, the little lines in it that poppies often have. And um, we're going to be talking this month too about the significance of this remembrance poppy. As you probably know, November is Veterans Day in the States. And um, the poppy has become a, um, a symbol of the fallen soldier. There are places in Britain, especially Flanders Field, they will, you'll see thousands of poppies um, in a field and um, that they put there just for Remembrance Day. So we're just making as many of these little divots in there as we can. And you know, I tried to do this with an all um, I tried a bunch of things. This, you just using the wire seems to work the best. There. So we've got that. And we're just going to let that. Because this is what, what, this is actually the seed pod. What was the seed pod, or I guess still is the seed pod, is in there. So there we have it. And that's our center. And I want to show you another way to make this. I don't have a place to put this. Another way to make this was I took, I don't like this one anywhere near as well, but it would work really well. I took floral tape and I wrapped this, um, the stem of this wire as tightly as I could, floral tape, creating that dome on the top. Then I just took a piece of black um, crepe paper. And I think for this, I used a really fine grain, fine, fine crepe paper and, um, and before I had put the paper on, while I still had the floral tape there, I did put these little lines in there. And I mean, you could do them with your fingers or you could do it with a wire, because um, this one you can kind of manhandle. And um, I, this is how Tiffany Turner makes the centers for some of her poppies too. So I did learn it from her. Thank you, Tif Tiffany. She's, she lives right on the other side of the hill from me. So you could try that. So we're gonna let that set up. And actually I'm gonna make a couple more because we always, I, I think a, a um, an arrangement of poppies is way prettier than just one. So why not? And um, just a little heads up of features for next month. I'm going to be doing a, um, a feature next month. On, I always have questions on this a lot about how to make an arrangement. 
So I am going to make an arrangement for you, with you, with all the flowers we've made this year, even from our old site. This one's gonna be a little smaller, but that's okay. The world is your oyster. I gotta stop for a second, thank you. What do you have? Oh, you can have that. <laughs> the joys of having a dog. Um, so I've got this one done the same way. I've got a little piece on there. I don't, doesn't matter. I'm going to put my finger, just to get a drop of water on my finger, just to smooth this all out. Okay, and we're going to get ready to put it on our wire. So a little glue on there. Oh, don't you mean I clog this up already? These clog up so fast. In fact, there we go. And there we go. Just go up the middle as much as you can. You're going to reshape this once you get it on the wire, so. It's okay, but you kind of want to get it up as close as you can. Just to give it some stability. This one's not as neat. But we'll fix it because nothing is nothing's wrong. We never do something wrong. And Mother Nature likes a lot of variety in how she does things. There, I can feel the the um, the wire underneath there. I don't want that to look good and flat. I'm just gonna roll this around a little more and take that off. Put that back in the pot. And so Christina is going to walk you through the petals, and hers is gorgeous, as always. So she is our guest artist this month. So excited to work with her on this. Jerry is still on paternity leave. He's got a brand new baby girl. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it's gonna be fine. So I'm just, so I'm just gonna keep smashing this down just a little bit. Now we're gonna add our little hat, cross hatches in it. And this is the most difficult part of this flower, really. From here on, it's easy. So I'm just gonna come to create the center, put one here, and then fill those two in. And, um, you know, I have to tell you, I don't know how many of these there are in a one in real in nature, but this is one of those things that let lets us play Mother Nature ourselves. Just there you go. One more. Yeah, maybe over here. And if you mess up, just take a little water and um and redo it. There we go. So, ta-da. And I'm gonna do one more. I hope you do all of them with me. I think it's just super fun. Why make one when you can make six? That's my theory. This is way too much glue, way too much clay, but it'll be a good place to start. Then roll it so I get that cylinder on it. Take off all this bottom stuff. And I'm gonna make this our top. Tucker um, has discovered that he likes crepe paper. So I actually just gave him a piece of crepe paper to destroy on his own so he would play with that. But he found a discarded flower. I don't throw flowers away very often, but this one kind of got mangled. So um, he found that one and he pulled it out of the can. And that's okay. We want Everybody wants to enjoy our work, right? Okay, so I'll just keep rolling this. And we've got our, it almost looks like a mushroom cap on the top. I'll water my finger. 
in the water. It just it gives you the ability to just make that super smooth. This is not very round. It's more oblong. But I don't think anything Mother Nature does is perfect. So we're going to grab our last little wire here. Put some glue on it. We have way more here than we need. So I'm just going to drive that right in up the center of this. Oops, it's sticking out. Cover that up. And push it down just a little more. There we go. So you can see how this one's crooked. We're going to straighten that out. And we're going to just bring this down. We're going to take some of this off. So you really want this to be, mm, what is it? It's a little over an inch. Okay, now I don't have a wire here, so I'm just gonna grab one that's not cut. I'll just use the end of it. They're coming unwrapped. There we go. So I'm just gonna use it to create our, you know what? I'm gonna redo that one. This, I think, so people, I have, no, I have said, you know, when I make a mistake, I should leave it in. I do leave it in because, you know what, we're all going to make mistakes from time to time. And it's so easy to fix them. I can let that dry a little bit. I have a baby wipe here. Yeah, there we go. I still see a little bit of that, but it's okay. We'll be able to manage it from here. Okay, so we're going to go here is to the middle. Here to the middle, and then we're gonna put one here, one here, and one here. Okay, and then we'll go to the other side, and we'll put. I hope you can see this. One here, one at ninety degree angle, and another forty five degree angle, and there you have it. It seems like we didn't get a very good impression on this one. There we go. Now we got a really good impression with it. And they're all going to be different. So, okay, there's our three. Bing, bing, bing. Okay. And through the magic of video, we have one already made. Ta da! And you see, this one's kind of crooked. It's okay. It's kind of crooked. And this is that clay, it's really dry. So I want to take my pieces that are drying out of here because I want to put the lid on that clay. And we'll take this one too. Okay, so close up the clay. Make sure you've always put your lid back on your clay or in a, a tight container of some sort that's well, airtight. Okay, so we're gonna get our little palette here and I'm gonna put a little bit of green in here. Just a touch, <laughs> oops, just a touch. Tucker says hello. And because I don't really know how, how these colors are gonna mix, so I'm just putting a drop of each in the wells just to see how it's going to mix. A little bit of white. Ooh, this needs to be shaken. Try again. Everybody can hear you. And then I'm going to add a little bit of this medium in here. Okay, I'm going to stop. We will be back because <laughs> somebody needs my attention. So I'm just going let, to let this sit like this for just a little, few minutes while I take care of Tucker. Okay, welcome back. Uh, that took a little longer than I 
anticipated. Um, so with those other ones might even be dry enough to paint them as well. So we'll see. So I'm going to add a little water to my brush. I'm just going to take a little bit of this green and a little bit of this black, I think. There we go. A little brown. There. Oh, that might be good. Yeah, it's kind of all of the ochre color. But I know I want to put in some of this medium. And you, like I said, you, it's up to you whether or not you want to do the medium or not. Okay. So we are very carefully going to, because we want to make sure that we don't put so much paint on it. It needs to be browner. We don't want to put so much paint on it that, um, you know, you still, that you don't see the little lines. Um, we had to work on this from photographs and, um, So let's just paint it down here. And you're not really going to see much of this part because we're going to have the stamen on it. It's going to be a little more. Let's add a little more of the medium to it. There, that's pretty. Do you can see that? I hope you can. Um, I don't know if the camera can get that detail or not. So there we've got that done. We're gonna set this aside. I'm gonna check on the other ones and see how they are and if they can be painted. Yes. There. Don't admonish me for using my one block of foam that I have in my studio. Okay, so this one's done. Dried, it's still damp, but it's dry enough to paint, I think. So we're gonna do the same, I'm gonna do the same thing here. Actually, you know what I think I might do is just put the medium underneath, so it, your layering colors works really well. See, and then we wanna come in with the darker, the browner one here. I will come back up. Let's see here, I'm gonna take a little more brown, a little more green, more water. You just want to be careful about um, not using too much water with this because it, it might just soak it up and then if it's still damp, which this one is. This is coming out pretty cool. Yes, sir, Bob. I'll do a little more on the top, add a little more of that brown. I sound like Bob Ross. Do you know that Bob Ross has been dead like 40 years and his TV shows are still going just as strong as they did when he was alive? That's a legacy. Okay, I'm gonna have to make some more paint here. So like I said before, you can use, um, I, want to get, I, guess, I want this to be a little more owner. Um, you can use any medium that you want to, to do this. You can do it with um, pen pastels. You can use, um, I'm using acrylic paint, which is a water-based paint. You could use, um, I don't know if you could use ink, alcohol inks on it. Because it, I think that the, it would just soak into the to the clay, and um, you can also do the method that I showed you where I did that black one. I want this to be a little more brown. Let's just add a little more brown to it. There we go. You know, I'm I, like I said before. I think everybody knows this already that I was a former I'm a former figure skater and you know what we love we love the sparkle lots of, there's no too much is not never too much bling so you can see this is the one I did first and it's um get a little greener than the others but I want to give it a little more shine there. now see how I got um paint in the groove there I don't want to, um, 
it puts so much paint on it that it takes away the little grooves. And the last one, and they're all a little different. A little more green, a little more brown. We gotta add some blue, black in there because I've got it. We want to make this a little darker, but let's be our first coat. Just kind of dab it on. And because these are still a little bit wet, they may actually soak up this paint. But I don't think it'll soak it up enough that it'll take away from your ability to work with it. I'm just want it a little darker. Pretty though. I'm gonna finish with some more of the medium. Yep, there we go. There. So, <laughs> oh, that one. When I look at the other ones, this is really bright green, and the others are more of a of a. Um, you know, we could, let's, let's make this adventuresome, shall we? I'm going to make one of them really dark, like almost black. Like my prototype, I just made it black. It's a kind of a brownie black color. Um, let's see what we can come up with here. Let's make it darker. The world is your, am I getting in here? The world is your oyster. And there, see, so we've got some different ones. And I'll rinse up my brush. Set this aside. These over there. Let's see this one here. This is an example. Okay, so now we're going to work on the the um, stamen, and we're going to give this a good stretch. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to cut off a little skinny piece that we're going to laminate between two other pieces. Okay, and then I'm going to cut this. In half, I think will work. Okay, so okay, it's a good stretch. You may cut they want to cut these in half again just because they're easier to work with. Or let's see. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these and we're gonna laminate this in between it. So yeah, I think they've been cut in half to um, to manipulate this. We'll cut this in half, and I'm going to grab a piece of copy paper. So I started to tell you that. Um, in December, uh, bonus content, I'm going to make an arrangement with all the flowers that we've made this year. And um, except the bird of paradise. Um, I, the one beautiful bird of paradise I, I made, I, um, I shipped it, I sold it and shipped it. So um, thank you to the person who bought it. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take a strip of this. And this is where this these little glue pens really are effective. Got my hands are dirty, I got clay and everything on them. Okay, and we're just gonna take and put a little bead of glue. You know what actually might be better? Let's try this. No, let's take this one. A bead of glue here. Um, and I will be right back. Okay, sorry for the interruption. Um, whoops, I got way too much glue on there. 
So we're going to take and spread just a, da a bead of glue. I look better going up for some reason. A bead of glue all the way. If you miss a couple of spots, it's not, the, not a big deal. better going up than down but it does you can see I get some on the table too that's okay okay I want to get this glue out of the way here okay so I'm gonna take our piece of paper and we're going to lay it down and we're going to take our glitter and we're just going to put it, I don't know if you can see that or not, I'm just going to like put some glue on it all the way down. And the reason I have this copy paper here is so that when I'm done, I can put that glitter back into the uh, the jar because nobody likes wasting things Let's see a few spots where I missed if you see white under there that might be blue I'm not sure find it okay pick that up and then see, we've just got that on there like that. I think that's gonna be great. Okay, now I'm gonna try not to waste any of this. And we'll do one more, because I know you like to see it multiple times. It's helpful, I think. I know it adds time to video, but I haven't had anybody complain yet about the length of my videos. I know they can be lengthy because I talk too much. Okay. Do one more just for fun. Okay. Um, my glue. I want you to do the same thing. I think the more you do this, this is one of the reasons why it is so fun to um, make multiples of something is you know, that you kind of learn as you go along. I have a tendency to make things up as I go along. So, um, you know, and when I, I hope my head's not in the way. So when, when I come on and do these um, videos with you, sometimes I don't really, I don't have it all mapped out before hand, but I figure out as we go. And I figure if I'm learning, you're learning right along with me. And isn't that what makes this so much fun? Now, if you don't have these glue pens, you can use a toothpick to apply the glue. And you can see I missed a couple of spots here. Just spread this glue over there. I mean, if you ended up glittering this whole piece, it wouldn't really matter because we're going to laminate it between two pieces. Now, that's going to be the tricky part. Laminating it between two pieces of um, crepe. And I tell you, I learned something because I did make the prototype one. And what I found out was that if I didn't, if I just glued this strip to the top of the, the other one, when I tried to curl the, the petals to go the direction I wanted them to go, then it didn't work. It started ripping it apart. So that didn't work. So I said, oh, well, let's try it this way then. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to try it this way. I think this will be a better. There we go. Oh. 
Okie dokie. Pick this up. It's the same. Put it there. Then we're going to put this back in the jar. Now, uh, it's my understanding, I'm going to say it here, cause, oops, because I, I know we're not being green with this stuff. I understand that these the glitters are made out of plastics and that it ends up in the in the water. So use glitter carefully. I um I've been buying glass glitter lately, but it doesn't seem to come real fine like this. And it's expensive. I mean, if you're using a lot of glitter, like trying to glitter a, a whole Christmas ornament or something, and it's kind of, it's gonna have to be that would be one expensive ornament. Although if you had somebody make it for you, it would be even more, right? Okay, so I'm going back to my story. Talked about um, the end of the year arrangement. Um, so I'm going to make an arrangement, like a table arrangement, with all the flowers that we've made this year. And um, if I have time, I will include the December flower challenge too. But um, we shall see about that one. Okay, so now coming back to these, we are going to... I know I got this into two pieces. Where's my other piece? I'm losing my mind. I'm like, oh, it's on the floor. So I do this one. Okay, I'll do this one. So I'm gonna stretch this out as far as I can, and I'm going to cut it in half. I'm gonna take this first one. I don't know if this is really dry enough to do this, but we're gonna try it anyway. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a bead of glue right along the top of this. And it doesn't have to be right on the edge at all, um, but kind of close would be great. I think I'm getting the lighter on glue in here. I'm gonna have to refill it or get another one. And be generous with your glue. Okay. Now we're gonna take this, lay it down, and then I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna lay this down right below. right below that glitter line. How cool is that? Oops. This is gonna take me a ticky time doing this. And I have to tell you, black is probably the hardest color to work with because it's so dang hard to see. I am... Um, I did the prototype on this, I not only wore my glasses, I wear contacts all the time, but I wore my reading glasses and I used the, the magnifier on my table lamp. I have a LED light with a, like a five times magnifier that I use for really intricate stuff. And I tell you, that was one of those times. I don't think there's any glue left on here. And follow my fingers. Okay, I'll take this and go right there. Okay, so now see we've got this lined up right under. I got this one on a little high. Let's bring it down. There we go. There we go. Oh, I'm still doing that high thing. There. There we go. Yes, got it. Yes. Okay. So you can, can just come in here with 
your fingers, try not to touch the glue because uh, with the glitter because you don't really want to knock it over. So back to the arrangement. Yeah, so um, I think I'm going to try to make like a table arrangement. Um, and I think everybody will enjoy that. I hope, I hope. So we're going to do the same thing here, but we're basically just going to laminate. We're going to put a little glue all over this one. Because we want it to stick to this one on the bottom. I don't, we don't want it going all wonky. In fact, you know, it would work better on this. Your handy dandy glue stick would work way better. Because we want these two pieces to stick together really well. I hope this is making sense. Um, it's kind of a convoluted way to get this done, but I, I really thought it through and just really couldn't come up with a better way. I'm sure you might be able to, so let me know. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm turn it over. I'm gonna take this, and I'm not gonna be so concerned about keeping it right at the same spot. But I'm going to be kind of close. Just like here. Because we only put the glue, on, the glitter on one side. I mean, if you want to, you could glitter both sides, but the only one side is going to be showing. Although that would kind of be fun, wouldn't it? There. I mean, you could come in and do it now if you wanted to. So there you have it. We're going to want to let that dry. Now we need to, um, I'm just going to use the back of the pen here to get this all laminated nicely, make sure it's really sticking. You use the handle of anything to just kind of stick that down there. There. So there you have it. Now, like I said, you could do both sides, and and uh, we could we could come in here and do the second side if you wanted to. So why not? Let's try it just for fun, huh? So we do the same thing we did before. Just gonna make a bead of glue going up here. Yeah, so the arrangements would be table arrangement. Um, I was really like to do a table arrangement for the holidays, but um, the blooms that we have are all so bright and summery, I don't think it'll translate well. So we'll do that to put on our table after the holidays. Kind of a little much on there. It's okay. Okay. Make sure it's right on the edge. I think I got lots of glue on here, that's for sure. Yeah. And I always put your cap back on here because to me it just seems to clog if I don't. And we're gonna do the same thing we did before. See now, if we would, if I'd have thought this through, we would have done both sides before we um, laminated it. But it, this may actually turn out to be the easiest way. Doesn't really matter. It's same, same, same end end game on it. There. And we'll just take a brush to that and brush it off. We're done. Put this away. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, do this several more times so I have enough for the one, two, three, four, five more blooms we've got. And I will meet you back here when it's all done. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day. We'll be back. Okay, so we are back and I've got all of my um, 
stamens all glued and, and everything and let that dry overnight. Um, I didn't clean up my mess too well though. And the next thing we're gonna have to do is fringe this um, stamen. So we're gonna fold it in half and um, I'm only gonna fold it in half once because, and this piece is, and they're all a little different, but this piece is about seven inches long. So I'm gonna fold it in half one time. And I've seen a lot of people do this. I know that Inga does this. Um, and I'm just gonna take my clip, because it's just gonna make everything secure. And I'm going to put it about, what is that? About, about three eighths of an inch from the edge. Okay, and we are going to, this is gonna be kind of hard to, to cut through because there's so many layers here, but we're gonna give it a shot. And um, you're probably gonna to wanna to cut down about, um, what is this? There we go, about an inch, maybe a little less, seven eighths of an inch. So I'm gonna cut like right to this the line here or where my clip is, okay? So we're gonna start and we're gonna do really as fine a fringe as you can do. And um, you know, the only, oops, the only way to do that is to um, practice. This is, I have to say this hard, it's hard for me. I have to do it this way, um, do it in my hands. So try that. Um, I just get smoother cuts here if I, and finer cuts if I, um, use my hands instead of the um, the clip. The clip isn't, isn't really working for me. I don't have that kind of patience. And this is not the easiest piece to cut through because it is, you know, it's got that glitter. It's three layers of paper, at, you know, on, along the running edge here. So just take your time. I usually cut pretty fast, but I'm taking my time here. Just get it as thin as I can. I'll just keep cutting until you finish. This glitter is probably going to be hard on these scissors, too. See that I missed over there. Let's go back, line it up. There we go. And just take your time and get through it. You can do this. And you know, fringing takes practice. Lots and lots of practice. And you know, I do end up with some you know pieces on the side there. And I do see a couple that are kind of thick that I'm gonna to wanna to come in and I'm just gonna do these last parts by myself. Open. And then I can see a couple here aren't as thin as I would like them to be. Finish this end here. Okay. Now, now, one of the things that we should have done in the start was, but we didn't, is to turn these up. So you can decide which side you want to be facing up because they both have glitter on them. I want to have this side facing up. So I'm gonna do it like this. So just take the back of your scissors and just don't pull on it at all. Just fold it, give that a, with your thumb, fold it a little over your scissors. And that'll give you that curl that makes the, the pollen look better. Makes it stand out a little more. It doesn't have to be exact, um, so just Take it, press it down with your thumb. I think that learning techniques like this will just help you learn your craft. And I'm a big proponent of 
Learn your craft. There we go. Okay. So, turn them over. And you can see there's my upside. And they're just, just curled a little. Can I see if I can bring this up for you? Just curled a little on like just that. Just take your, your thumb over your... over your, the back of your scissors. Just kind of reinforcing this by going back over it again. You don't need to. And see, I have a blank spot there. That's okay, no problem. It's gonna cover itself up when we get going on it. Okay, so we have one of our centers. This is the lightest one. And um, we want to create this fringe. Here's, here's another tip that is helpful is to take the back of your scissors and run it across the bottom. And that, you know, back of your scissors, just like we did before, I'm just curling this back ever so slightly, just with the back of my scissors right along that imaginary line. <clears throat> and that kind of helps you figure out where you want your fringe to, to be. So we're just gonna Play with this so I want it maybe a little higher like right up in there so next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some glue going on here get a nice bead of glue now there are poppies of this this Flanders type or remembrance poppy poppy um Come in either singles or doubles. They come with four petals or six petals. And I think using six petals is just easier. The placement's easier. So, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it right down here. This is actually just a pretty big fringe. But they're all going to be different. And then just wrap it around. Make sure you're keeping your set line down here the same. So that all of your fringe is the same. This is a lot of fringe on here. Probably didn't need that much. Probably could have actually done it with half, but I love the fringe. Well, maybe I'll try it on a, another one. Try a little bit different technique. There we go. And just press that down. Now you want to just squeeze this and get this in there. And you can see when you pull this down that your fringe is there. Magic. Woohoo! Got it. There we go. And you probably want to just curl this a little with your fingers. And bring it down and curl it. I could have actually put this a little lower than I did. So you pull it back. And use your fingers to kind of curl it so it's kind of sloped or scooped curved I guess there you go now because this edge is the way it is I will usually um, secure that a little bit better by taking a strip of paper and I'm going to use some of this green that we're the fern and moss I'm going to use this to to um, wrap the stems and make the leaves out of when we come back for that. So I'm just gonna take a piece of this, kind of secure that. You can use a hot glue on the gun on the bottom of it too, whatever works for you. So I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna wrap it. just to give it some cohesiveness and then just keep wrapping until you come down here get it nice and tight and wrap it down there we go there we go should we try one more just for fun um, and we'll place it a little bit lower. I'm just going to take this piece and fold it in half. And I'm going to 
cut my slit here first. I do that first because then I don't have to mess with coming around at it again. So I'm gonna come in and start fringing. I'm gonna make this fringe a little shorter than the one we just did. I think it was a little long. And I do appreciate so much your comments on the tutorials. Do you find them helpful? Is it, you know, put in a way that's easy for everyone to do? And I, we've really, in this series that we've done all year long, we've really worked on learning techniques like laminating and manipulating your pep, your petals and your stamen and your leaves, especially like on the Alstomeria last month. Um, those leaves that were wired so they could get kind of curly because that's what Alstomerias do. cutting and I'm gonna have to come back in here and open this up and do this part so I get some here that are pretty big and if you find that you're um you're too big your your fringe is too big um spin a little little and I'll show you what I mean when I say that see it's way easier to cut just It was easier to cut, maybe not. You just get some real resistance there at that end. So let's go in and cut some of these some more. Make them a little thinner. This is not my best fringing. But if you find your fringe is too bulky, just take your and and twist your Stamen, I do, I'm always my thumb and forefingers, and you can twist it. Just be really careful with the with the uh, glitter. And, and uh, oh, I wanted to also mention, instead of, if you didn't want to use glitter, you could use a different, just a different color paper here, something that's going to make it um, look like you've got pollen there. You could use a, a, a reddish brown. Um, you could use a... a darker gray, you know, could color it. Um, you could use a lot of things, but you could just put another color in there. And another idea is that instead of adding the glitter like I did, you can add um, pollen, like um, turmeric, cinnamon. Um, you can also buy commercial artificial pollen too. So I think this side is prettier. So I'm going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to... Just fold these over. Like I said, this is not my best fringing job. And you could do it with a shorter piece than I have here. There's a lot of poly a lot of um, stamens on there. But I think it is pretty saturated with stamen. And then I'm gonna come in, I'm just gonna bend this back See, where does it go? Okay, I'm gonna bend this back like where the base of the stamen is. Just helps it pull down. Okay, we are going to glue. And um, you don't wanna put so much glue on that you end up with a hot mess but you really want this to hold nicely. So um, be ample with your glue. Let's try this black one. This is the one that I did that was a, di a little differently. I didn't show you how I did it, but I told you how I did it when I just took um, some floral tape and I wrapped it on the top and created the dome on it. And then I took um, um, an awl and created um, the, the little dents in here, and then I covered the whole thing with a piece of fine black crepe paper. So I want this one to be down a little further. So I'm going to bring it down like uh, about there. That should be good. And this one is a little thinner 
thin. The stem is a little thinner here. So let's just keep wrapping. And I'm not getting lined up here. There we go. There. I have to say black crepe is probably, for me, the hardest thing to um, work with because... Um, you know, I'm almost 70 years old. It's, I don't see as well as I used to. And I find the black is just really hard to see. So when you have this all done, you want to just pinch it, you know, so you get it tighter on there. And then we'll take a piece of our paper. And... gonna come down like this and this just makes everything hold together really well okay now let's open it up it's gonna be really cool I think I see my 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 fringe is a little shorter and I think it works better so this this one is probably about three quarters of an inch. It's a little shorter. Oh, I love that. And I think it sits just right on the... So there you have it. That is our center for the poppy. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of mine. And I'm going to hand it off now to Christina. And Christina is going to make some beautiful petals for us. And... Um, She's got some great techniques that I think you're going to really enjoy learning with her. So thanks so much for joining us on The Paper Florist. And I will see you. I'll come back here when um, we do the leaves and the foliage and the uh, stem. So it would be really great. Thanks so much. I'll see you soon.